Hello everyone. Today we are here for Splunk developer training. So let's discuss about the today's objective. Today's training will provide the understanding of the Splunk development concepts and Splunk developer rules. So under the Splunk development concepts we have following uh, basic concepts of Splunk development like searches and reports. Uh, which we create uh, on the basis of requirements given by the different users and then these, these searches can be used in the form of reports. The second concept is charts and dashboards. These are the types of graphical representation of the data stored in Splunk. So we can create uh, charts and dashboard based on the search queries which we write on the data which is stored in Splunk. The next thing is alerts. Alert is an action which is a safe search triggers to notify users a result set of requirements or errors required by the users. The last uh, concept is apps. So basically Splunk's app framework works from a specific directory structure. We can create the directory structure within our etc apps directory. And this etc apps directory is stored in the Splunk home. So wherever you install your Splunk, you will find etc apps directory. So let, we will discuss these each and every concept one by one. So let, let me open Splunk home screen. And then we will discuss how we can use these all concepts in our Splunk. So let me try, uh, let me log in this uh, with the admin user and then I will provide the password and now I'll click on sign in so when we click on sign in it will open our Splunk home screen so first concept is searches and reports here I will write one uh, search and I'll save it as a report which we can use later on the dashboards or some kind of reporting so we have an internal index in Splunk which is the underscore internal let's search this index for the last 60 minutes and see how many records it will fetch so it is now it provided us 11047 events which we can save as a report so there is one but uh, drop down in the right hand side save as when we click on this drop down there is an option report when we click on report then it asks about the title of the report so let's provide the title as internal underscore report let's provide it as internal underscore new underscore report then description we can provide any description here which is based on our report and the third option is time range picker whether we want a time range picker on the skin or not so we don't need it at the moment so let's go and save it there are other options which we can set like permissions schedule acceleration and embed so these options we will discuss later let's close it so this report is now saved we can go in the reports under the settings and we can see that this report will be created under that menu so let me open settings in the different tab And when I click on the drop down, it is giving searches and reports and alerts option. So here you can see that there is one internal underscore new underscore report is created, which we just created on the basis of index equal to underscore internal SQL or we can say Splunk query. 
so here is the permissions which we can set set whether it sh should be private or public so that is fine let's uh, keep it as private and there are other option like enable disable then we can run this particular report from here as well and also we can schedule this report let me open the report and then we'll see So here is an option to schedule this search when we click on it then it asks when we want to schedule it like uh, if I say basic schedule type then it will run after every 5 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes based on our settings which we provide. So this is how we can create a search and report. We will discuss these reports in our later uh, classes in the detail. So our next uh, concept is charts and dashboards. So as we discussed that charts and dashboards are the graphical representation of data. So let me show you how we can create it. So suppose if we use the same search index equal to underscore internal. for the last 60 minutes and then search then it provides us the number of events so there is one visualization tab after statistics when we click on it we see that uh, if we provide this as a chart then it shows the chart in the form of uh, different type of charts like bar chart line chart some, and we can also save it as a dashboard panel so here is an option to save it as a dashboard panel in the right hand side when we click on dashboard panel it asks the title of that dashboard so the title is internal dashboard or we can say internal new dashboard and there are other properties which we can set so let's go and save it and then close it we can view these dashboards under the dashboard option here so I clicked on this uh, dashboard option here you see that we have created a new dashboard and it is available under this particular dashboards menu. So this is how we can create the charts and dashboards. There is uh, one chart command which we can use uh, with this uh, SQL query which we can discuss uh, later. So this is the Splunk query basically which we can, uh, we, there are different options of Splunk queries which we will discuss in the later classes. So our next concept is uh, alerts. So we, as we discussed, we, uh, we discussed searches and reports, we discussed uh, dashboards. Now we will save this particular search as a alert, as an alert. So here is an option to create the alert. So when we click on alert, it provides us the option for the title so first alert title we, we can provide it as a name first alert internal and then we can schedule this particular alert whether we want to run it as a real time or we want to schedule it okay so there are other options like uh, how we can schedule it like uh, do we want to run this alert every day or every week or every month so let's do it as every day and now there is an option of the timing that at what time you want to run this particular alert so let's say let uh, to run it at two o'clock and then there are the trigger conditions option whether you want to fire this alert based on the number of results, number of hosts, 
sources or there are some custom conditions so let's do it as a number of results when these results are greater than zero so whenever this particular search index underscore internal will return more than one row this alert will fire and then there is a button next when we click on it there are different options like uh, uh, sending the mail whether we want to send this particular alert with the mail to the recipients so basically whenever we create an alert then we send it to different groups based on their application teams and other security teams so when we click on send mail checkbox then there is an option to provide to field that to whom we want to send so suppose if we want to send it as just uh, one address and we can provide multiple app, uh, email addresses as well using the semicolon okay so now there is one subject priority message these are the options which you can provide so we can provide a message like uh, this alert will this alert is fired on internal index and then here we can provide the subject Splunk alert on the internal index okay so and there are other options like uh, do you want to send a link for that alert or do you want to send the results of that particular alert so if you click on this then these 11196 events will be sent to the particular recipients and then we can save it and there is a permission option which uh, you can provide whether it should be public or private so we save that particular alert and we can go under the settings and such as reports and alerts when we click on it then we will see that the newly created alert will be available here so this is the one which we just created first underscore alert underscore internal now it is uh, saying that at what time it is going to be scheduled and this has private permissions so this is how we can create alerts so this is the concept of Splunk development so we discussed about uh, searches and reports the charts and dashboards the alerts the last thing is apps so as we discussed that we can create our own apps under the etc apps directory so let me show show you that where are these apps exist let me open the splunk first i will show you where are these apps so in the splunk web ui there is an option apps when you click on the drop down there are options search reporting manage apps uh, so all the apps will be available here under this drop down so when we click on manage back manage apps it provides us the list of apps which uh, currently splunk has so these are the all apps which currently it has by default when we use when you install the splunk so let me show you where these these all apps are st stored so we go to c program files and then Splunk we click on it because we installed our Splunk under C program files so here is the etc folder when we click on it there is one another folder apps so we store our all apps under this folder these are the in Splunk internal apps which are av available here and you can see all the apps here as well so we can what we can do we can create our own apps here and then all those apps will be visible under this uh, apps screen 
so these ads usually uh, is a very wide topic which we can discuss in the later sessions in detail so you will understand how we can create our own apps or how we can manage the apps so basically these are the basic concept of splunk development like searches and reports charts and dashboards alerts and apps so now let's move forward and go to our next slide which is roles and responsibilities of splunk developer so following are the basic roles and responsibilities of splunk developers like searches reports dashboards charts alerts and apps so all these uh, concepts which we discussed just uh, before this slide all those concepts are the basic responsibilities of a splunk developer so splunk developer should uh, will be responsible for creating the searches he will be responsible to creating the reports dashboards charts alerts and different apps so basically the splunk developer role is very wide which is mainly for the development side the administrator side is just something different which uh, where we just uh, create the environment of splunk and we can manage the users and all so but splunk developer role is like uh, we have to create all the dashboards apps and alerts so we can say that this is the more wide role in the Splunk development side. So this is all about the roles and responsibilities of Splunk developer. So thank you very much for your time.